I really didn't feel like reviewing Onward, to be honest. I mean, I got bigger fish to fry. Look at all these upcoming videos I have to work on. Most of these have been on my list for months. Look here, I wrote Rank Furb. I don't even remember what that means. Uh, rank Furb. Rank Furb. It's crazy. I'm a crazy person. But anyway, I saw this movie I had no interest in seeing because I hoped Pixar would surprise, surprise me. me. And this would be an unexpected gem. I didn't think Coco was going to be good, and it was amazing. I didn't think Toy Story 4 was going to be good, and it it was great! And yes, I didn't think Onward would be good, and it turned out that I was completely right this is not a very good movie at all. Now, don't get me wrong, this is no good dinosaur or Ralph Breaks the Internet, it's not god awful or anything, but it's probably the most forgettable Pixar film I've ever seen. I mean, at least I remember how awful good dinosaur is on a regular basis. With this film, I'm struggling to even remember what happened a couple hours after seeing it. The premise itself is an incredibly bizarre one, and I think it turned most people off the way it was presented in the trailers. And yet, yeah, I really wish I could say Pixar got me emotionally invested in a disembodied pair of legs. And they kinda did at first, but the emotional investment stopped once the quest started because this was not an engaging quest in the slightest, no siree. I've had D&D &D campaigns that were much better written and more engaging than this multi-million dollar feature film. I have two major problems with the movie, the first of which is that I did not laugh once. This might be a first for Pixar, with the obvious exception of Cars 2. I mean, I smiled when the Manticore lady poison someone. That's the closest I got. The movie is startlingly unfunny, and it doesn't have a strong enough emotional core or an interesting enough world to make up for that like Coco did. And even Coco was a little funny. It's so weird to come out of a Pixar movie with no comedic takeaways, but that's just the way it is now, I guess. Whatever. My second major issue is that I genuinely couldn't stand the Chris Pratt character, whose name I don't remember and do not care to look up. I get that he's supposed to be a screw-up, but they take it way too far in a number of ways. There's no reason for him to aggravate a group of pixies. There's no reason for him or the dad legs to even come with Ian to get gas. He constantly feels like he isn't taking the quest to get their dad back seriously at all, despite how emotionally invested in it his brother is. I actually really enjoyed Ian as a character, and I wished he was paired with a less obnoxious supporting character, because then I might have actually had a good time with the movie. But in addition to that problem, so many plot developments feel forced and contrived to an absurd degree. I remember rolling my eyes at what happened to Chris Pratt's van in particular. Don't get me wrong, there's some fun stuff, like a nice little dancing scene, all the neat different magic spells Ian uses, and a couple of cool scenic and character designs. But this is honestly kind of a nothing movie. Until the ending. This is where everything really came together, from the action in the final battle to the emotional resolution. I thought it was really cleverly handled, and it was pretty satisfying from an emotional standpoint. I didn't cry, but I respect the raw power of this film's conclusion nonetheless. This movie's director, Dan Scanlon, previously made Monsters University, which is very much in the same boat as this film. They're both nothing special, but everything does at least come together during the extremely clever ending. I know he based the premise on his own experience growing up without a father, and I think this movie will definitely hit harder if you can relate to that. But there's better works of art that explore that concept. Shout out to the Beetlejuice musical. I can't really give this first draft of a good idea points for only really finding its footing during the ending. If this movie had more time in the oven, it could have been something special, but Pixar is now just another cog in the corporate Disney machine. The fact that a Simpsons short played in front of this movie just kind of proves how impersonal this animation studio has been forced to become. I actually liked the short better than the movie, but the whole point of these shorts was for Pixar to give us a little appetizer before we feasted on the film they made for us. But now Pixar is working hard to meet a corporate quota, and Disney is slapping whatever they can in front of Pixar's movies just for the sake of maintaining tradition. Yeah, it keeps the brand consistent, but it's lost the soul. Speaking of soul, hopefully that'll be good. Pete Doctor hasn't steered us wrong before. But as for this movie, I was not amused, and I recommend just waiting for it to come out on Disney+. Plus. Honestly, that's probably where they should have released it in the first place. I'm giving it a 4 out of 10, and I don't anticipate ever having a reason to think about it again. Good night, Tri-State Area.